Welcome back. In this video, we want to talk about the while loop. We use the while loop to execute a set of code repeatedly as long as a certain condition evaluates to true. So let's look at the syntax of the while loop. We use while, let's say i is less than 7. Don't forget the colon. We should print, let's say, i. Alright, so this is the syntax of the while loop. Now let's print this and see something. If we print this, we are getting name error. Name i is not defined. Okay, so this is one of the difference between the while loop and the for loop. We saw in the for loop that we were able to declare the variable on the same line as the for loop. Okay, but for the while loop, you can't use a variable without it being defined first. So we have to initialize our variable in the while loop okay so we have to say let's say i is equal to any value that we want here you can start with one two three anything but here we want to start with zero so we are initializing our i variable in the while loop to be zero so we are saying that if zero is less than seven then we should print zero all right so let's run this and see something and we are getting something that we called infinite loop all right the while loop works different from the for loop. The while loop expects that you give it something that it will terminate. All right, a certain condition that it will reach and then terminate its code. Otherwise, it will go on and on and on and on. What we have done here is as long as i is less than 7, that is 0 is less than 7, we should print 0. So we have to put a certain condition here whereby i will no longer be less than 7. Then the code will be terminated so how can we do that we have to increase i right that is i equal to i plus any number we want let's say two whatever that you want so here we will increase it by one all right then we can reach a point where our code will be terminated and we can do this by using the augmented assignment operator right plus one so if we print this what we have done here is first we printed i and then we went back then we came down here and then we increased i by one and then we check if the new value that is one because zero plus one is one it's less than seven then we print i we got one then we check here we add one to our current value now which is one so if we add one to it we get two then we check if two is less than seven if two is less than seven then we print it okay so let's cut this one here and then put it here and see what we will get and then if we run this we are seeing that we started from one up to seven because what we have done here is before you even print anything you are increasing your i variable by one right so you have added one to zero before you print it and after you print it you check if one is less than seven if it's less than seven then you increase it again so we get to you print it so know what you want don't put anything anywhere know what actually you want your code to be the result that you want from your code so that you won't be getting any semantic errors okay so let's get back to our old code and then we can use a while loop if we print this we can see that you will stop at six okay so if you use a if you use the else statement, the else statement can also be used with the while loop as we saw in the for loop. And then we print i, you will see that i will be 7 in the else statement because the current value stored in i after it was terminated in the while loop is 7. But we check 7 is not less than what? 7. That is why the 7 was never printed in the while loop. Okay. So it's not always like you have to increase this. You can actually decrease your variable. So let's bring an empty space here and then let's initialize another variable here. Let's say s is equal to zero. And then while x is let's say less than or greater than seven, you want to print x. And then we want to print it on the same line. So we override the next line character. We want to separate them with commas. 
and then here instead of incrementing x we decrease x okay we decrease it by one so here we check that is x is equal to zero yes is s greater than seven s not greater than seven so here our code we will get a back here right so we have to change here to seven and then here to be zero rather all right so we are checking is seven greater than zero yes if seven is greater than zero then we should print seven and then we decrease seven by one so we get six and then we check if it's still greater than zero till we reach a condition where x is not greater than zero okay so let's do another thing here let's compare these two so if we run this the first one we are seeing that we started from zero and we reach what six but the second one we started from seven and then we stopped at one so know the difference and know what you want at a time and what you want your code to be at a time okay let's comment these ones out and then let's use a while loop to let's say calculate the product of all the numbers okay we want to get the product of all the numbers between 0 and 10 how can we do that so let's say we first we have to initialize a variable s is equal to 1 and then a product is equal to 1 and then we will say while let's say 10 right we want to multiply the products by our variable x okay so we get product times equals s this is the same as doing what product is equal to product times s and then after that we want to increase our s by one so here you don't have to print the product here all right so this code is just going to get the product of all the numbers between zero and then 10 but 10 exclusive right so let's print product here and let's see the number that we'll get we are getting three six two eight eight zero so that is the product of the numbers between zero and then ten then exclusive all right so the while loop is really really powerful we can use it to do a lot of things okay now as you saw in the for loop we can also use the break statement and then the continuous statement in a while loop okay so here we can actually bring another condition here that if let's say i equals let's say four all right we should break from the code okay so this as soon as our i reaches four we will terminate from our code so let's print this and see and then we are getting zero one two three four so as soon as we reach four our while loop was terminated so we check here zero is less than seven then we printed zero and then we check is zero is equal to four no then we increase zero by one we went again and then we check if i is less than seven then we print it if i is equal to four no if it's not equal to four then we increase it we went on and on and on so we got to the last condition okay and then the else statement that we saw with the while loop and then the for loop it works the same okay the else statement will only be printed if there is no break in the while loop so you can try that one out let's look at our last example using the while loop and then we can call it a day we will be using it a lot it's a very very powerful thing to use in our code so if you remember when we were handling errors we can do try all right and then we want to print the age of a user so we get int and then let's say input all right and then we tell the user enter your age as simple as that after that we want to print the age of the user so you are let's say age years old that is all we want and then accept here if the user doesn't enter a number we print please enter a number all right so let's run this code and see something 
Oop, I have commented those ones up. So if I run this, we are getting, let's say, thin. And then you are thin years old, the code stops. Good. But what about if you run this again and I enter EGDG and I hit enter? I'm getting, please enter a number. But we want, after getting this error, we want our code to give us this input again enter your age all right so if we encounter an error and then we don't get what we want we want the code to return back to the initial stage to ask for the user's age again right so how can we do that we can use the while loop to do this so let's wrap this whole code in a while loop and print you can use Control alt t and then we select the while loop here all right so here we are just saying while true we should try this okay so anytime this condition evaluates to true we should try this so let's print this or run this code and see what you get now enter your age then we are getting enter your age again let's enter something let's say a string that will give us an error and so we are getting please enter a number enter your age this is actually what we want but we want when our code evaluates to true when there, there is no error in the try statement we want our code to stop so how can we do that so that is if we enter 10 here or let's say 20 that is an integer we enter an integer or a number here we want our code to stop not continue asking us enter your age enter your age so if you remember we had an else statement with the try and accept we use it so we can use that one here else then we bring our break statement here because we said the break statement can only be used in loops okay for now that is what we can use the break and then the continuous statement for only in loops so this is part of the loop right so what we have done here is if there is no error and if remember i said the else statement will only be executed if there is no error in the try statement when we are doing error handling okay so if we stop this code and then let's run this code again all right so if we enter let's say an error prone we are getting please enter a number all right so it's going to tell us to enter a number until we enter a correct number so here we are not entering a number we are getting an error here so the accept is catching that error okay so if we hit a correct number that is an integer 98 we are getting you are 98 years old and then we exit the code so that is how we can use the try and a sub statement with the while loop this is not the only way you can even wrap your whole code that is a while statement can even come under the try and accept statement but you have to know what you want okay what you want to achieve with your code so practice 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 you can only get better if you practice okay so just try and work around play around these goals initialize changing the increment and the decrement and then find more examples and then practice that is the only way you can get better bye bye for now see you in the next video